All right, this is Tim O'Neill, um, LBCA Executive Director. I'm talking with Jeremy Trahan, our LBCA President. Um, I wanted to discuss his season and, and his coaching background. Uh, appreciate you doing this, Jeremy. Welcome aboard. No problem, Tim. Uh, yeah, if you would talk about you know how you got started, uh, your background, where you started, some of the places you've coached. Yeah, I started. I played high school baseball at North Vermillion High School. Graduated in two thousand three. Uh, went on to play at Louisiana College for four years, um, and then after Louisiana College, I came right back to my alma mater in uh, two thousand seven. And I've been here for 14 years. I was able to get the head baseball job right out of college. Um, didn't know everything, but you know, worked pretty hard to to try to better myself through the LBCA and uh, a lot of other different things to get to where we are today. Uh, talk about the LC LBCA a little bit, um, like when you started with your meetings and what you learned and what it's done for your coaching career. Well, I think one of the best things that I tried to do at the beginning was try to network and try to connect with different coaches, no matter the age, whether they were older than me or my age, just try to make connections and, and, um, and get to know people. Uh, and, and then besides that, just trying to learn as much as I, I could through the different talks and the, the different things that were going on through the LBCA. Um, you know, I, I, at the beginning, I would, I would write everything down and try to implement it almost everything that I would, I would hear. And then as I've gotten older, I've really tried to more take the few things that I think I could add to what we're already doing to, to make our program even better. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, I'd listen to stuff and I'd come back with notebooks and stuff, trying to put it in and just got, kind of got out of hand, you know, those oh, first definitely. few years of doing that. Definitely. Any speakers that you really remember that, that stood out? Hmm. Man, yeah, put there's been so there. yeah, there's so many of them. Um, you know, I remember uh, Coach Sam Tully at Lafayette High. That was at the beginning of my career, listening to him speak, and he's been doing it a long time. Um, you know, a lot of those older coaches that I've seen doing it for 30, 40 years, I, I've always looked up to because um, obviously them doing it that long, it, they have to be doing something right. And, and especially Coach Tully, he's been at the same school for a long, long time. Um, so I would say that would be one of them. Uh, man, I'm trying to think. There's been so many good ones. Um, man, that's tough for me to think of on the spot. Yeah, I put you on the spot there. <laughs> uh, what about some of your, your mentors, I guess a word would be, uh, influences on your coach's career, some other coaches or guys you played for or with? Um, you know, I'd say just – you know, when it comes to people I've played for, so I played my first two years of high school baseball for Brent Broussard, who was at North Men, started the program here. Um, I played for him for two years, learned a lot from him. Then the next two years, I played for Chris Stevens, who's now the head coach at Notre Dame. Um, you know, learned a ton from Coach, coach Stevens. And then when I moved on to LC, um, Coach Mike Burns was a great mentor of mine. Um, you know, he, he really, really, uh, you know, he, he connected deeper than just the game. Um, you know, I still talk to Coach Burns today. Um, you know, I, I think of him like a second father. Um, so I, those were the three coaches I've had that really, you know, connected uh, with me through the game. I will say um, I also feel like when it comes to uh, being a young coach, um, I, I always felt like when I first got in, we were in the same district with uh, Coach David Jordan at Catholic of New Iberia. He, that was when he was at Catholic of New Iberia the first time. And uh, he always, you know, he never big time me. He always tried to help me with, whenever I had questions. And, and I've, I always appreciate that. I think David knows a ton about the game. And, uh, and he helped me tremendously as a young coach, you know, with any questions I had and, and any, kind of, any kind of things that I needed or needed to talk about, he was always there at the beginning of my career. So I, I'll always, uh, you know, I'll always uh, be thankful for Coach Jordan in that regard. Um, you were instrumental in, in bringing the All-Star game to to Louisiana College. Um, I think it's worked out well there. We've, we've had some, some good games the last few years. Can you talk about that process a little bit and 
about the all-star yeah. event you know we were looking for a place um that had you know that that we could bring the game to somewhat more of a centrally located area we wanted it to be at a college but it was tough because a lot of the colleges have regionals and with louisiana college um their stuff finishes a little bit earlier so we knew that the field would probably be available we knew they had covered seating we knew it was a pretty good atmosphere and they had just recently put turf down on the infield so we knew with weather that would help us out um and coach burns was on board um he's been very uh welcoming to us uh and it's really been a good spot for the game uh, we've had nothing but but really good reviews on it the, the past few years when we've had it uh, so it's definitely been a good spot for the game. Um, talk about, you know, you served on the LHSCA um, executive committee for a while. How, how, how does that um, translate or involve the LBCA? And how, how do you um, kind of so, in the middle of, of our coaches and uh, LHSAA a little bit? So the way I originally got on the LHSCA committee was um, anytime you're the, the head coordinator of the All-Star game uh, in the past, you were put onto the LHSCA uh, executive uh, uh, council. And, and slowly they changed that to where they put the presidents of each association on there because there was a lot of turnover every year. And when somebody would get on, they would, by the time they would get to like their third or fourth meeting, they were just trying to get them to know what was going on. And then a new person was coming on. So they wanted a little bit more consistency with that. Um, and so they started putting the presidents of each uh, association. And, and it's really, you know, it, it goes through the, the, the main goal of the LHSCA is for the coaches. Um, they put on the convention in the summer uh, where, where coaches can go for every sport and, and learn more on their craft. Um, and then it also, it's, it's an association just like ours for, for the coaches. They, they, we have, um, you know, they do the coaches cars, they do a bunch of different things like that. Um, and they have meetings probably four times out of the year. Each sport sort of kind of talks about their all-star game. Uh, the meetings, they talk about the finances of the LHSCA, um, talk about the scholarships because they do give some scholarships out to coaches uh, that not to coaches, but to athletes whose parents are coaches in the LHSCA. Um, and so they go through all those different things at the different meetings. Obviously, the all-star game reports they get are based off of what time of the year it is. And then, uh, like, coming up soon, they're going to be talking about, you know, this the convention that they're going to be putting on this summer, um, which I think they just sort of put dates out on that. I don't know exactly which ones they are. I think they are going back to it being in person. Um, but that, that's the gist of the, the LHSCA um, uh, council. Do you know if – if and when they'll be voting on proposals this year? Has that been set? I, I'm not too sure. Um, I, I really don't know. Okay. Let's uh, let's get into your uh, your team a little bit. You're having a great season. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, a little bit about your team? Yeah, man. We're 23 and four right now. Um, we have a young team. We have five seniors. Um, we lost 11 seniors off of last year's team, who, which was really, really talented. Coming into the year, we really weren't quite sure where we would be. We knew we would be competitive, uh, but we just really had a lot of question marks. But we've came out and played really well. Um, this team is deeper, I think, than last year's. Might not be quite as talented, but we, we've got – we can handle the bat one through nine. Uh, we've got some speed. This is we've that we stole more bases this year than we ever have in the 14 career me, uh, me being here. Um, so we, we're pretty we're just very consistent. We don't have any standouts on the mound either. We've got a lot of arms. We could roll somebody out any day and they're all pretty close to the same. We have anywhere from eight to 10 arms that we can roll out uh, on any day. So we've you know, we've had our ups and our downs, but overall, we've been very consistent. Defensively, we played very well. I think in 27 games, we're averaging an error in a game. Um, so, I mean, oh, oh, we got some speed. We can play defense, and for the most part, part we throw strikes. So, if we can do those three things, we usually uh, come out. We're in the game in most of the games we play in. You want to highlight a few of your players? I know you don't want to leave anybody out, but uh... – Man, we – Oh man, it's tough. The, the newspaper guy was talking to me about that today. Um, 
you know, I would say, um, you know, our, our, our most consistent guy this year would have to be Tyson LeBlanc, who's a sophomore. He's four and one on the mound. Uh, he's thrown really well. He really should probably be six and oh for us. Um, he's hitting, I think, a, close to 500. He's got about three home runs. He's only struck out once this year. Uh, just handles the bat really well. I think he's only got one error defensively as well. He plays second base for us. Um, John Nick Tuchet's pitched very, very well for us. He's six and oh with an under one ERA hitting the ball well for us. He's hitting around 350. Um, one of our seniors, Dale Martins, hitting about 380 with six home runs. Um, and then our leadoff hitter who sets the table is another sophomore, Camden Bro. Uh, he's hitting in about 430, 440. Um, he's got about 35, 36 stolen bases on the season. Um, so he sets the table for us. And I mean, there's countless other guys. We have Brant Fontenot, who's a sophomore, who's hitting around 410. Um, you know, and, and really, if you go up and down our lineup, we're, they're all hitting very consistent. Um, you know, so it, it's, it's been, it's been a pleasure to have, we have, and then we have some guys coming off the bench that, that have been good for us too. I mean, we have a senior that's one of our pitchers who's like five and oh, John Carter. Um, he's got probably 20, 22 at bats on the season. We started him. um, in the uh in the dh spot on saturday against ascension episcopal and he, he went he, he hit a double scored two runs for us and really set the table down there um for a big game against a big matchup so we got some guys off the bench that are pretty good hitters that can hit too um but that's just testament to him being a leader because he's he's never down he's always up uh, you know and he's ready for when that opportunity comes <laughs> Man, I knew you were really disappointed about losing last season. I know you, you were really excited about that team last year and, um, you know, COVID just shut everything down. Well, how, how have y'all dealt with it this year? Any, any uh, you lost any games, any players or anything like that this year? Um, this year so far, we had, um, we had one of our starters uh, on the mound was out for two weeks. He was quarantined. Um, luckily we didn't have to send anybody home for that. Uh, he just missed a few starts. Plus it took him a little while to get back into it. Um, besides that, we, we really have, have been lucky. Um, you know, we, uh, what lucked out on, on that was we had a, uh, we were sort of on break and we didn't have a game, whatever word out. So we really didn't have to quarantine many people cause he wasn't around anybody. Um, so it, it's worked out to our, our advantage. Uh, we really haven't had many teams that we've played that, that have had to deal with it either. Just from talking to them, most people have stayed pretty healthy throughout the year when it came, comes to that. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been surprised about that. Yes. Very, very much so. What, what about your district? What, what's it looking like? How's it uh, well, right now we, uh, we beat Washington, Marin and LaGrange both times we split with rain. Um, and then now we've got Eunice, who was supposed to be this week, Tuesday and Thursday, which we just moved to Sunday, Tuesday. But we have to beat Eunice twice in order to be co-district champs with Eunice. So Eunice is already done um, with districts. So it, it will have to sweep Eunice um, Sunday and Tuesday in order to be uh, co-district champs. So we have our hands full. Uh, Eunice has always got a good team. You think you can outcoach the legend Scott Phillips? <laughs> I don't know, man. It's going to be tough. Last time we played in a three-game series, he got me. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. What about 4A? What's what's 4A non-select looking like? Man, I think it's wide open, man. Um, I know Tioga is the team everybody's looking at. They've got a dominant arm. Um, they've got, a, a, you know, some depth. they got some players. I haven't gotten to see them yet. But I, I mean, just looking at it, I think it's wide open. I think anybody can beat anybody on any day. Um, you know, we're fighting, fighting, fighting to try to stay in the top four if possible. We dropped down to five recently, um, but we're hoping with this stretch, we play Notre Dame Saturday, Eunice Sunday, Karen Crow Monday, Eunice Tuesday, Brobridge Thursday, and Church Point on Saturday. So we're hoping if we can come through that stretch uh, looking pretty good that we can hopefully bump back into that top four uh, just for if you do win the first and the second round, you're at home and uh, in every round in the three-game set. So 
that's sort of the goal that we're looking for right now, just taking it one game at a time, and hopefully we can slowly creep ourselves back into that. All right. Um, well, man, you've helped me a lot with this LBCA. Um, anything else you want to talk about LBCA-wise? Man, I, I just would like to see people get involved. I know when I got into it uh, at a young age, I was, I was, like I said, trying to connect with people and Anytime there was something that, that could be done, I was always trying to volunteer and just wanted to get involved, just wanted to make it better and wanted to get connected with buddies. And, and you know, I, this really wasn't the plan for me to end up doing something like this. It just sort of happened. Um, and, you know, we got a good core group of guys that really do a lot of work. And, and, you know, it would be nice to try to see more people get involved, come to the conventions you know, just, just really be a face out there so the, the younger coaches can, you know, be more involved in what we're doing and, and help better the game in Louisiana and, and help make things better for everybody. Yeah, we've built up the membership quite a bit, but it, it still baffles me why just about almost every coach is, is not a member. And, well, they miss yeah. out the conventions. I mean, our conventions are, are a ton of fun. Yeah. I, just I mean, I, I joined the uh, ABCA again this year and I, and they didn't even have a convention. I just joined it to join it. You know, it's, it's, I think it's just one of those things that you need to put on, on your list of things to do for the year and just do it. Whether, even if we wouldn't have been able to have a convention, I mean, it's just part of, part of being in that organization, you know, you, we want to get as much uh, membership as we can. Yeah, I agree. Hey, turn your head to the right a little bit. <laughs> uh-huh let me see that z on there uh, yeah we sure. got the z on i put it on on purpose <laughs> appreciate that yes right. anything else you'd like to talk about or mention or anything no man not really looking forward to the playoffs i think this year for every class it's going to be wide open and i think we're going to see some some fun games out there so definitely looking forward to the next stretch of of, of games with the playoffs uh, looking forward to seeing everybody. You know, the state championships are going to be coming up. The state, uh, the the all-star game is going to be coming up. That's always a great time for everybody. Um, just wishing everybody the best. Hope that, hopefully everybody stays healthy. Yeah, and hopefully we'll get that first round two out of three passed sometime. No doubt. No I doubt. That's going to be good for the game. That was been scaring me, man. We were a few years back, we were 27-3 and three going into the first round and got beat by uh, Albany. And had a we had a really good team too, so that that's that that game always scares you. So it's uh hopefully we can get that going. All right, well, good luck the rest of the year. I appreciate everything you've helped me with and everything you do for the LBCA. And again, good luck the rest of the way. All right, Tim. Thank you. All right. Bye.